Welcome to One Sky, a special presentation of Heartbeat Alaska, a forum for Native issues and concerns. One voice, one sky. Welcome to One Sky. I'm Jeannie Green. Before we begin today's program, congratulations to Mr. Byron Malad. In case you didn't know, he's Clinkett from Southeast Alaska, and he is the new mayor of Juneau, Alaska. One Sky. The name implies people from all over the world living under one sky. That doesn't mean we all have the same philosophies or the same thinking. Alaska Federation of Native Convention is coming up, as we all know, this next week. I talk with Julie Kitka, president of Alaska Federation of Natives. I also spoke with Mr. Paul Swetsoff. He's on the board of Alaska Intertribal Council. Two different thinkings, two different philosophies under one sky. Recently, AFN passed a resolution encouraging the Bureau of Indian Affairs to continue tribal funding, PL 93638, contracts, grants, and compacting with the regional nonprofits, as opposed to direct funding to individual tribal governments. Well, AFN, we had uh, two committees that looked at the issue of the BIA, and there are several issues that they came out and they made recommendations on. The first recommendation was is they wanted to freeze on any BIA reorganization until there was consultation in the state. And so that was the first position that was taken by the Human Resources Committee, ratified by the AFN's Legislative Committee, was to have that go back to the Congress and try to put language in the appropriations bill that would actually freeze no BIA reorganization at all unless there's adequate consultation and the majority of the villages agree with the reorganization plan not just a consultation where you get people's view that people agree this is the way the BIA had to be reorganized reorganized so that was the first issue that the AFN committees took a position on the second issue was on the contracting issue and encouraging the BIA to continue their 638 contracting to the maximum extent that they can and also to let things be done on a regional basis as far as um, contracting programs with the tribes and not to go in and try to pull apart these 638 contractors that are going on or to um, you know encourage villages to pull out and stuff but to work with all the people affected so for example if you have a regional nonprofit that has a contract and, and it's a mature contract it's been operating and the BIA wants to talk to the individual tribes about contracting include everybody in those discussions include the mature contract of the 638 into the same meeting so that everybody that's all affected is involved in the discussions and we think that that is something that needs to occur um, but the, the issue is to continue to, w w on the issue of the 638 contracting for the regional organizations, what we want to do is make sure that we maintain um, the cost effectiveness of the programs and you stretch them to the maximum extent possible and you maintain some of these um, efficiencies that you have in a regional organization that you may not have on the village level. This particular issue, this was brought forward by one of our committees and it was intended to be language that was put into the appropriations bill for a one year time period only and to send a strong message to the BIA on the reorganization and the funding issue. Uh, I might mention that it didn't um, get accomplished in the appropriations bill so it didn't go anywhere other than uh, just being passed by our committees on that so it did not uh, get into the appropriations bill and there is no freeze on the BIA reorganization but I think that the discussion that led up to that is valid and there's some very legitimate concerns that uh, people have with the BIA and the role with the BIA in the state now that there's so much 638 contracting and compacting going on that the discussion needs to continue. I think that people have not changed their views that there should be no reorganization without consultation and approval. Um, so I think that people will continue on that as far as the regional versus the individual tribe. I think that there's still a lot of room for discussion and we hope that some of these issues can be aired out up to the convention, even at the convention too. My, my feeling about AFN making the resolution is that they should have consulted with the tribal governments prior to passing such a resolution. One of AFN's primary concerns as addressed in the resolution was that they were worried about equitable funding for Alaska. Well, I agree with that, with that concern. However, 
had they consulted with the tribes, we could have gone forward, by example, AITC and AFN and other tribal organizations. We could have gone, f and individual tribes as well, we could have gone forward, developed a common voice for addressing that issue and a common strategy, and simply walked forward as one people to address that issue. The question is, is that really the agenda, or is the agenda one, which is at least how it looks to me and other people, I think, that I've spoken with, is the issue one of the non, of, of villages pulling out of, of the nonprofits in some regions, or a portion of the villages pulling out, thus leaving the nonprofits with less money to spend than they are ordinarily used to, because they're taking, because when the village pulls out, they are taking the money with them, which was their money. It was the money is funded, it's 93638 money, which was meant to go to that particular village. And when that particular village pulls a resolution, they're saying, you no longer get the money, we do. That's the issue. <laughs>
and the state as representing Native people. I think there was some justification for that in their own defense in, in, the, in the past. There was no organization which could, which could had the ability to take that role, and AFN uh, did it, and I think that they needed to do it in the past, even though there's been a lot of flack about it and what have you, and even though AFN isn't particularly fond of me, perhaps, I, th I agree that they needed to do it. AITC is now a strong organization. It's an organization that, that, that uh, represents the tribes. I think everybody's recognized that. It's recognized by, uh, by the feds in both the, in, in the executive and legislative branches, as well as the agency level. I think that with that, in, that the, there is a tribal consortium. It represents over half the tribes. I think that AITC needs to be recognized as representing at least half, half of the villages in this state, the tribal governments in this state. As such, that is, that is, I'm assuming, who we're talking about. Over, I mean, when, when we talk, discuss issues, I'm assuming we're talking about issues involving Native people and their governments. We're talking about Native governments. And so where do you go for that? You know, where do you go to consult? Where you go to those organizations representing the, the Native governments? And you go to the Native governments themselves. And there, there's also the issue of what program you're talking about and how much money. Yeah. Some of the programs that are operated on a statewide basis are very small pools of money that if you divide it out to every tribe in the state, Effectu effectively there'd be no resources left. And so there needs to be some system for prioritizing where, when you have limited pools of money, how that, that could get spent in the most effective way possible. I don't have the answers on the yeah, funding thing. Nonprofits. I think that nonprofits, there is a role for nonprofits. I think that role has to be defined by the tribes in each nonprofit service area. And I think it's up to the tribes to, just to, to determine what that role is and, and breaking that down farther to each individual tribe. There are going to be some tribes, for whatever reasons, and it's their own business, do not want to contract most or all programs and services on their own. Maybe they just don't feel capable of doing it now, and they want to, and they want to go ahead with their nonprofit. I think that is absolutely valid. I think that is the role of the nonprofit to take on to, to take on that responsibility and the benefits of those responsibilities. That is a decision of the tribe. Some tribes don't want to. Uh, Give any programs and services to the nonprofits. Don't want them to represent to, to receive funds on their behalf. Their choice. Perfect. I think there is a role for every nonprofit in this state, or every regional nonprofit in this state, as long as the tribes in that region or even some of the tribes in that region support them. I think that that, that role is, bec is because you'll never get funding for each tr every program will not be funded fully. There are competitive funds in a lot of cases for each individual tribe. And only a consortium can deal with it. Now, what if it's that particular nonprofit or some other consortium the tribes want to do, such as Yupik Nation, form their own consortium, is again up to the tribes in that region. But I think there is always going to be a place for consortiums. And if this, and but as time goes by, they have to be realistic and understand that most that, that a lot of tribes, most tribes in the state, are going to want to do the programs and services themselves because self-determination is a common issue and that they just have to be creative in other ways to, see, to, to figure out how to survive. Uh, by example, I think every tribe in the state is at some point in the near future going to be taking the tribal operations funding they get. That's like usually twelve, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Usually funds a tribal operations department and a nonprofit. Well, I think that they have that right, that that's self-determination. And I think also that the nonprofits have a bear a special responsibility, and that special responsibility is, as was outlined so well in the recent recommendations of the Alaska Native Commission, was that they have a responsibility to train the tribes in their service area, and I think that's a responsibility that's embodied, if not by the letter, at least in, at, at, at least, uh, in principle in 93638, in the law establishing 93638, to train those, those villages that want to go on their own to offer them training in how to apply for, implement, and administer those grants which they want to assume, those programs and services they want to assume. And I think, and I also agree with the Alaska Native Commission recommendation that administrative funds received by the nonprofits on behalf of the tribes in their area, in their service area, 
be given to the tribes? Those well, I think tribal self-governance is going to be one of the issues that's going to be discussed quite heavily on the second day of the convention when we talk about um, the Joint Commission uh, report and the recommendations because clearly one of the recommendations that came out of the report was the need to for Native people to take back political control of our own lives and our communities and certainly tribal government um, have a major, major role to play in the state as well as the community level in asserting that political control. So that's a major issue that's going to be talked about on the second day of the convention. Celebrate the 127th anniversary of Alaska's oldest retail merchants, Alaska Commercial Company, at our 18 AC Value Centers. Customer service is our first priority. Fun. It should be part of growing up in Alaska, but alcohol may put an end to that. Alcohol has the power to stop you from going to places you want to go and from doing the things you want to do. It may seem like everyone you know is drinking, but in reality, more than half of Alaska's 7th to 9th graders haven't tried alcohol. Stay in the majority. Alcohol free. It's an attitude. For more information, contact the Alaska Council on Prevention of Alcohol and Drug Abuse. Yeah. Well, we have a, a number of exciting things that are going on before the AFN convention even starts in regard to Native Vote 94. First thing that happened this past Saturday night in which we had the Anchorage Rally at the 4th Avenue Theater, which was real exciting. We have a young um, group of students and young people that are organizing a registration drive here in Anchorage, and they had a, a, a rally, which uh, had several hundred people, good turnout. Um, another exciting thing we have going on that we've never had before is we're having a breakfast training session for potential candidates, um, kind of on the idea of grow your own candidates and start grooming our young people and people that are interested in running for political office down the road and give them some pointers on what they need to pay attention, how they need to organize, how they need to start raising funds and so on. So we have a, like a two-hour training session and we're hoping to have this occur every convention from here on out so that we can encourage more and more Native people to, to know how to run for political office and actually have the tools to do that. Another thing we've got going on, and that's on Wednesday, October uh, 12th from 7.30 to 9.30 in the morning, and people that are interested should contact our office to, to go to that breakfast. But following that breakfast from about 9.30 until 5, we have a get out the vote training workshop, all day workshop on what do people need to have organized for the last three weeks of the election following the AFN convention and the idea is to have village plans, actually written village plans for each village that wants to participate in this training session of things that can be done and should be done in the remaining three weeks to make sure that we have as many Native people participating um, in the political process and voting on, on November 8th and things like getting rides to the, the polls, um, encouraging absentee balloting for those that um, are homebound or are, are going to be away from the village who may not vote, but actually have a written plan of some of the things that can be done and a sharing of these ideas in a statewide forum prior to the convention so good ideas that are going on in Dillingham can be shared with some of the villages around the Nome area or with Southeast and so on. So we think that's a pretty exciting workshop two major themes around the convention. One is Native Vote 94, increasing Native participation. We have a live gubernatorial forum in which important questions are being asked to the gubernatorial candidates. We have a uh, general election voter guide which is going to be distributed at the convention that has important questions asked to the candidates, also for the congressional races and issues on the ballot measures that are pending. Uh, we have a lot of discussion on the importance of voting and what a difference that can make. We have presentation of the Elizabeth Pradovich Awards, recognize those communities with the highest voter turnout in the primary. 
the other major area that we're covering in the convention is that Alaska Natives Commission report. We're having a formal presentation of that report from the commission to the delegates at the convention, basically turning over that report to the delegates to do with it what they would like. We have a number of AFN board-sponsored resolutions picking up on the major themes in that report, which we hope to generate a lot of discussion and debate among the delegates, and then have a plan of action that came out of the convention uh, that we would go forward with. One of the key issues that we are proposing to the delegates for their discussion and debate on that is calling for major field hearings by the Congress of all the committees that have jurisdiction on Alaska Native issues to come to the state and listen to the people in the villages themselves to help us change federal law to make it work for Native people as opposed to uh, increasing the dependency that people feel on different programs or policies made outside of the village. So our keynote speaker, Dr. Eric Irene Days, who is uh, a special guest of, of the Alaska Federation of Natives coming in to be our keynote speaker. She is a, a world-renowned human rights advocate in the world. She currently chairs the United Nations Working Group on Indigenous Population, and I hope that um, uh, your viewers are going to be able to hear from her both her keynote speech as well as, as interviews on that, on her views of what's going on around the world, as well as how that, that can um, help us here in Alaska, um, both our tribes and our people themselves on that, improve our lives. And I think that people will be very excited to hear her, and she's going to have a very positive, strong message to us, and I think it'll be very encouraging to people. Where is she from originally? She's uh, originally, she's traveling over from Geneva, Switzerland for the, um, specifically to keynote the AFN convention. And like I said, she's a well-renowned uh, human rights advocate. Many indigenous people and groups across the world have nominated her for human rights awards. ICC and others um, have been very impressed with the work that she's been doing internationally on behalf of indigenous people. And we're very honored to have her coming to our convention. And we hope that she can meet with um, organized um, native um, tribes and and um, organizations here while she's while she's in town for the week. I'm excited about the convention. I think that there's a lot of serious things. I hope that uh, the debate on the uh, the Alaska Native Commission reports generates a lot of discussion, and we come up with a good plan, and that there are things that people. Um, take responsibility for and, and, and go with, because um, I think it's very important. I guess there's one other conference that we have going on, Convention Week, which is uh, new, that we have not done probably for a long, long time. Uh, we have a conference starting on Monday and Tuesday on taking community responsibility, and the whole idea behind that conference is if you didn't have one change in law or one additional dollar, what can you do to improve your family's lives and your community's lives to make it better? And I think that's a pretty exciting conference. Uh. Thank you so much for joining me on One Sky. If there are subjects you'd like to hear, if there are people you'd like to see and find out what they have to say on One Sky, please give us a call at area code 907-272-8111. We'll see you next week.